I wish every professional knew these four things. It would completely change your career trajectory and it would completely change the types of opportunities that came your way. If it's your first time here, my name is Lisa Appia, certified career strategist and personal branding consultant. And if it's not your first time you're coming back, well, welcome back to another video. So let's get right into the topic. The first thing I wish that every professional knew is that self-promotion doesn't make you self-centered. This is something I hear a lot with the clients that I work with who typically are introverts, they are quiet leaders, and something that makes them uncomfortable, and I have been there as well, is self-promotion. And the reason for that is that a lot of times people feel like it's bragging. They feel like they're going out of their way to speak about themselves and it's not something that comes to them naturally. Personality aside, there are different reasons why people may not feel comfortable with self-promotion. A big one that I've seen working with my clients is that it could be from social norms or cultural backgrounds. If you are coming from a culture where it's more focused on the collective and you are brought up and told that you need to be humble, it may be difficult for you now to completely shift those cultural and social norms and make the adjustment to now speaking about yourself and speaking about your achievement and how you've been able to succeed in your career. That's one of the things I often see when people aren't comfortable with self-promotion. In addition to that, another reason could be fear of rejection or criticism. It's vulnerable to put yourself out there to begin to share stories about your career, share stories about your path, and to really position yourself as a thought leader. It does take a lot out of you in terms of that vulnerability of just putting yourself out there and not everyone is willing to do that. And so another reason that people may not feel comfortable with self-promotion is that fear of rejection and criticism. And then obviously, like I said at the beginning, personality may be one of the reasons why if you're an introvert, talking about yourself or putting the spotlight on yourself is not something that you typically want to do and so that may be another reason why self-promotion is not comfortable to you. So what I want you to know is that self-promotion doesn't make you self-centered as I said and really the reason why self-promotion is so important in your career is that it enables you to gain more visibility. It causes you to make that shift away from thinking just job to job to actually thinking about your career. You know, when you have a job, it's just for a number of years you're doing that job, but it doesn't represent your whole career. When you are someone who's intentional about putting yourself out there, promoting your skills, building your thought leadership and sharing that information, you are ultimately thinking about the long run. You're thinking about your career, which is really a lifelong journey. And with every shift and every adjustment that you will make in your career, you will know that you have this brand or this record of the things that you've been able to do because you've been sharing them on a regular basis, whether it's within the workplace or even online. So self-promotion really, it's about sharing facts. It's not like you're saying things that you haven't done. You are actually just sharing your achievements, you're stating facts and you're sharing them with people so that they know that you have been able to make a difference for the company. You've been able to save the company money or you've been able to move a project forward that brought a, a certain merger or a certain acquisition for the organization. It could be huge things in terms of achievements, but it can also be the small ones that we sometimes overlook. You know, sometimes in working with my clients, they often tell me like, oh, I just do my job, you know? They don't realize that the fact that they're able to build relationships or the fact that they're very good at, at analyzing data, for them it's just something they do naturally so they don't even think too much about it. But those are the things that make you you. Those are the things that make you unique and those are the things that you want to be able to market and to be able to position yourself as a thought leader. So self promotion really doesn't make you self-centered. It's actually about sharing insight on what you've been able to achieve. It's not actually about just putting the spotlight on yourself. It's about also lifting others up while you're doing it. 
because in sharing your story, you are going to inspire others. In sharing about your journey, you're going to be able to have people who will resonate with what you're sharing and it will boost their own growth. I've seen this personally as I've built my brand and I have promoted my skills and knowledge, especially on LinkedIn. I have received so many messages of people who have told me like, because you shared this, it inspired me to take a next step. Because you shared this, it inspired me to ask for a promotion. You know, so you thinking of your journey and your path as something that is insignificant, but that journey and path can actually influence and inspire another person. So when you shift that mindset away from self-promotion is just about me to realizing that it's about you helping others it's about you showcasing your skills to benefit others around you it'll enable you to feel a lot more comfortable about promoting your skills the second thing that i wish every professional knew is that networking is not using people i know many times people are like oh i don't want to bother people i don't want to reach out to them i feel like I'm using them if, you know, I'm reaching out to them for to find out, a, you know, maybe a referral or you're trying to find out if they have an opportunity at their company. The reason why you may feel that you are using people when you're networking is because perhaps you are only talking to people when you need something from them. And this is not only something that you need to pay attention to in your career but in life generally i have those people in my life that i know if i see a phone call from them or a message from them they want something that's the only time that they reach out to me and obviously as a person i've had to learn how to set boundaries and make sure that i'm not taking advantage of because certain people are just like that so ultimately you don't want to be that person <laughs> you don't want to be that person who only reaches out to that colleague or that previous boss when you need something from them and the way that you can ensure that that doesn't happen is that you make networking a part of your life you make networking something that is intentional and not only when you're in need and so for example myself as an introvert this is not something that comes naturally to me. I don't think of, hey, I'm gonna give somebody a call or hey, I'm gonna send a message to this person. It may cross my mind sometimes for a split second, but then I, I typically forget because it's not something I want to do. So I, <laughs> I'm not gonna go out of my way to do it, right? But something that has really helped me is just making sure that I block off time in my calendar to follow up on people that I have met in the past, whether it's at a networking event, at a conference, or even meet people that I meet online. Just taking the time to say hello, send a message to find out what they're up to, make it more about them and where they are at in their own journey. And what I've seen is that the beautiful thing is that there's always a win-win when it comes to networking. It's really about building relationships and as much as maybe one day I may need a referral from them or a reference from them or maybe, you know, an opportunity may come through them, that's not my end goal. I'm not reaching out to them intentionally because I know, oh, this could be a potential client. I'm reaching out to them genuinely because I want to build a relationship with that person. And if I have something to offer that can benefit them, obviously I'll share that with them. But in the same way, if they have value and insight that can benefit me, they will share it. And that's how you get that win-win when it comes to networking. And so you won't feel like you're using people when you're actually being intentional about it. And I have an example of, you know, when I started my career development and personal branding business a few years ago, one of my first clients was a previous manager that I had. And, you know, she obviously signed up because she saw I started my business to encourage me and all that, but she actually need, was in need of my services to help her to be able to boost her personal brand. And so there was a win-win. I remember 10 years ago when I first met her and she was my manager, 
I was the person who was in need of references for job opportunities or I was that person who was seeing her more as a mentor and maybe getting more out of that relationship but we stayed in touch over the years and now I'm in this position where I can now help her. I can now support her in her career journey and since then she's landed two major promotions being an executive for a non-governmental organization and then moving to uh, being an executive in a provincial government so you know sometimes I look back at that story and think like hey you know I was in need at the beginning she supported me but now I am also someone who's in a position to provide support and help her in her journey so this is the win-win that I'm talking about when it comes to networking and it's not always going to be immediate you know you don't only want to reach out to people when you need something as I said because then you have an immediate need you're stressing and that's when you want people to support you but they may not be in that position at that time to support you so make sure that it's something that you do intentionally so that on a regular basis and consistently opportunities are coming your way another thing I wish professionals knew is that asking for feedback doesn't make you needy sometimes that feedback is what will enable you to make a difference in the way that you're doing things to implement a new strategy or to change the way you're thinking about something it's through that constructive feedback that we get from people that that we are often able to grow and I will make the disclaimer that it's not every comment or every feedback that you get from people that you need to take or that you need to implement because people have different intentions and so not everyone has your best interest in mind and so you do have to be mindful about that but do take that opportunity to ask for feedback and it will sometimes surprise you in terms of what you can receive from people that can help you improve as a leader and as a professional in a lot of organization they do 360 feedback and that's an opportunity for people that you've previously worked with to give you insight and feedback anonymously so you could take advantage of something like that to be able to gain insight and feedback from people you've worked with but also just asking you know you don't need it doesn't need to be like formal like in a performance review or anything like that but just making it a part of the way you work to find out is there any way that I can improve in what I am doing many times the reason why people don't want to ask for feedback is because they may fear judgment in the sense that you know you feel like if I'm asking for feedback they may think I don't have the skills or the qualifications or they may think I don't know what I'm doing so I rather not ask another thing that I often see is why people don't ask for feedback is that they did in the past and <laughs> they didn't get a good response and the response that they got really stuck with them and they took it to heart and so they're like I'm not asking for feedback again yes those things may happen but you don't want to focus just on that so what you want to realize is that it's with that feedback it's with that information that you are able to grow and improve the way you work all right so last thing i wish every professional knew is that building your personal brand doesn't mean that you're fake of course as you look on social media and you scroll through your phone you will see a lot of people who present a certain persona online that may not be who they are in reality and sometimes when you do meet these people and you compare to what you were seeing online you realize wow this person is completely different and they've been faking it so yes those people exist but it doesn't mean that you need to build your personal brand that way it's extremely exhausting to try to pretend to be someone else whether you're doing it online or you're doing it at work Focus on being true to yourself and that will enable you to uncover the unique strengths that you have to be able to leverage them in the workplace. If you are someone who's an introvert who's trying to find out what are those strengths that you have that you can 
market and leverage in the workplace, I have a quiz called the Introvert at Work Quiz. It's a short quiz that enables you to find out what are the strengths that you have and how can you actually implement them if you're job searching, if you're preparing for an interview, or if you're just looking to advance in your career. So I will share the link to that quiz in the description and you'll be able to take it to find out what are those skills that you can leverage as an introvert. Ultimately, what you want to do when building your personal brand is share your story. Share your story in an authentic way. Share your story in a way that makes you comfortable. And the benefit of that is that you're able to control the narrative of your career. A lot of times we may not realize it, but we do have a personal brand. Our personal brand, it's the impression, it's the perception that people have of you. And if you're not intentional about controlling that message, somebody else is going to control the message for you. And so ultimately what you're doing when you're building your personal brand is you're telling people, this is who I am. This is what I can offer your organization. This is the knowledge, the skills that I have and how I've positioned them in the past and I can do the same thing for your organization. So building your personal brand really allows you to control the narrative of your career. So truly be proud of your achievements. Don't be afraid to speak up, share those achievements, to build a brand that resonates with who you are and what you have to offer. If you are building your personal brand on LinkedIn and you need some insight on how to get started, I am sharing another video right here where I provide information on how to build your personal brand on LinkedIn. So I will see you in that one. Take care. Bye.